Yo, what's going on YouTubers? It's the Natural Born Thriller and welcome everyone to All Elite Wrestling Review, the show from November 6, 2019 and this will be AEW Dynamite Results where they were in Charlotte, North Carolina. Their commentators were Good old JR Jim Ross and Excalibur and Tony Schiavone, which by the way, um, that's another thing too. Uh, we're returning to the last uh, previous uh, review I did with the AEW Dynamite. Um, I forgot to mention the part where after the whole contract signing thing with the whole thing with Dustin Rose being attacked by Jack Hager back, you know, uh, at the parking lot and everything, Tony Schiavone would, uh, ends up being on, back on commentary along with Jim Ross and Excalibur from that previous um, um, episode of AEW Dynamite on uh, October 30th, 2019, which was the Halloween Eve episode of AW Dynamite. So for this week, not only Tony Schiavone is is back for the whole two hours worth of Jim Ross and Excalibur for for this edition of AW Dynamite, like he like he normally always does. This is the Go Home Show edition of AW Full Gear 2019. So let's get right into it. We get the opening match, Pac versus Trent, being accompanied by Orange Cassidy and Chuck Taylor, or some per, some way prefer Chuck E. T. But the match itself it was pretty good between Pac and Trent Barella. And I don't remember if there was any outside interference from Chuck Taylor, but I remember there was a um uh interference from from Orange Cassidy when he got in the ring. Referee, uh, so sort of Orange in the ring, and also Chucky T distracts him and everything. I see myself, so I'm supposed to believe the referee ain't gonna um see, you know, Orange Cassidy, you know, you know, and and Pat have um something um have an altercation in in the match, and like, I, I thought that was I thought that was dumb. I think um it was dumb on the, on the referee's part because referee looks at Orange Cassidy get in the ring, and then he's getting distracted by Chuck Taylor and uh, it. it Obviously, it was a it was not a a, a good um a good setup there, to uh, you know for, for the, what's going to happen next in this match, but the match uh, was being pretty good between Pac and Trent. Um, yeah, they're going they're going by Trent now, not Trent Barella. Uh, but yeah, they're going they just go on um, go with um, with with his name Trent. But which I'm fine with. By the way, I'm fine. Uh, you know, um, Ring of Honor. I think they done done. I think they done two before Ring of Honor. But, anyways, well, yeah, the match itself, um, both both men were on on um, getting moves in, you know, for the for the most part, and then also we get to the finish. So, the finish here, Pac, he goes for. I think he went for a brain buster on the outside. Yes, a brain buster on the outside. Gets him in the ring. Goes for his finishing with the black arrow. Goes for the pin. But the referee messes up because right right there Pat could have won and the referee uh saying you know his shoulders were up and everything and I was like no I could I could literally I could see clearly right there that Trent is not getting back up. He's not getting shoulder up. Now unless Pac would have just picked him up and teased you know I'm not gonna end it this way. I'm gonna end it this way with the brutalizer. Which he has a win with the brutalizer, you know the submission move. A Trent Trent could have, um answer and therefore and referee calls for the bell. And and your winner, Pac. Holy shit! Are you fucking kidding me? Not even WWE would will, would will, will have done this um this botch or do do some um uh, mess mess some mess up spot right there or or, or screwed up your know, Pac's uh finish move there. The one move that you know has always been has always been protected, even when he was called Neville back in WWE, even when his time in NXT as Adrian Neville. Is that red arrow, the red arrow move that he does off the top rope, which is a, a thing of beauty, and no one had, no one has kicked out that. Not even John Cena has has, has not kicked out that. They just did a a, a protective finish there, where Seth Rollins interferes. But AEW, what the fuck was that? And, and on top of that, that referee, this referee, I, I don't know who he is. Um, I don't remember his name, but I know I know one thing. It wasn't Rick Knox. Sure. And I'm pretty sure Earl Hunter will never mess up. Will never mess up. You know, will never mess that up too. By the way. Wow. That. 
and, and Paco was upset about this too, by the way, um, after, after, after that. So, I'm upset with this too, man. Like, this is Pac's um, finishing move. A uh, finishing move that, that's always been protected, no matter fucking what. And they fucking screwed up there. They fucked it up. And, uh, and on TV, in front of the crowds, in front of the, uh, of the executives of TNT. What the fuck? So Pac gets on the microphone and tells the crowds to shut their mouths. And he heard um, Hammer Ella Page's uh, challenge and he said he accepts. He's going to uh, make an example of him and I see myself, okay, I barely, I, I barely pay attention to the, um, to the problem because of the whole botch finish uh, of the match that uh, that do that do uh, that do me off um, because of it. But looking back at it now, Hammer Ella Page versus Pack, a regular match again. We just seen this already, back at Dynamite, the first episode of Dynamite. Unless Pack goes on one, uh, uh, you know, have a um, a match, you know. With no disqualifications, whatever you know, like you know, yeah, no disqualifications, no no barred, whatever you know, false count anywhere, whatever. It's a regular match, and, and, and there's nothing on the line here. So why why are they going at why are they going at each other here? Unless Am Page wants on um, you know to beat on Pac so badly that he that uh, he he wants to uh, stick it to him. I I don't know, I don't know. But. Now, right now, good start here, folks. For what pertains to um, you know, this this episode of, of the Go Home Show edition for AW uh, Dynamite that they 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 are sending us the fact that um, yeah, we we need we need to tune in to, um, to watch Full Gear. It was now not it was not it was not going doing so good at all. Um, so we get to Cody uh get interviewed by Tony Schiavone. He has an announcement to make, announcement that he tried to make before um, but uh, you know at the whole. You know, what happened a couple weeks ago with, with the inner struggle inter interrupting. Um, so this time he, he finally got the opportunity to do it. Uh, like, unlike with WWE with Daniel Bryan. Just saying. So, Josh Ryan's interviewing him. And then Cody. Um, he says, um, let me see, where is it? Where is that promo? So Cody Rose noticed some some biggest names in in wrestling uh, that that were rest, that were wrestlers, uh, but also um, in management. That's, you know, in management, he says AEW is uh, it, it is an island for wrestling. This is freedom. Cody says he uh, heard some of the criticism of being uh, in management and in in, in the title in the title match. At, at the same at the same time, uh, and, get, and he gets it. Cody will say he gets it. He says he uh, he he wants to make an announcement that uh, if he, if he doesn't beat Chris Jericho, that he will never challenge for the AEW World Championship title ever again. And uh, and again, he says you know he's saying that because you know you know some fans are uh, criticizing him and everything. But I'm looking past I'm looking past that. I'm like like fuck those fans. Fuck fuck on what they think. You know, the hell the hell with those fans. My gripe about this is that um, he hasn't um, been getting so many title shots of this because it just started. AEW just started. All the wrestling just started, and the boat and the boat just got there. Unless you, unless it was going on for a long time, you know, for for many years, um, it will make maybe it'll make more sense. But but no, he's going with the route where um, your fans are you know are criticizing him. Because he's getting he, he's, he because he's part of management of AW Dynamite because he's a um he's one of the, uh, the executive vice president of AW and he's he uh, he he just gives himself a towel shot there against Chris Joker at Full Gear, which is why he decided to make the stipulation here. But then again, but again, come, uh, from from my own point of view, I'm looking past that. But it's whatever. But um, but Cody says he, uh. He's he's heard Chris Jericho call him uh, um, a millennial bitch and someone uh, who grew up with a silver spoon in his mouth. Cody notes that Jericho grew up uh, with these um, these um, similar childhood and 
and calls Jericho a stupid dick. And he tells Jericho he needs to, you know, he needs this generation, he, he needs this generation more than he needs Chris Jericho. And says it takes them 14 years to get to the, to this point, and he won't be uh, discredited by Chris Jericho's claims. And says that I went from undesirable to undeniable. And and Cody Rhodes was being was being very passionate. He was very he had, he had fire. He he cut a promo like I never seen him cut a promo before, and it was it was it, I thought I thought it was good, it was, it was good a good damn promo. It was, it was right it was right up there with with his dad's promo of hard times. So yeah, uh, I love this promo. And he says that uh, the the elite will eat the inner circle alive when they uh, uh, eventually meet in the ring. You know, so basically he's teasing there could be uh, a faction facing each other in in the near future, which I can't wait to see that too. So it represents to the to the elite. You got Cody, Matt and Nick Jackson of the Young Bucks, Hangman Page, and Kenny Omega. And then you got Chris Jericho, Santana Ortiz, you know, uh, uh, Sammy Guevara, and Jack Hager. So yeah, I can't, you know, if, if, that, if that match ever happens, I can't wait to see that match. But yeah, uh, that was a nice season there. But yeah, like I said, good ass promo from Cody Rhodes, props to Cody Rhodes. Even The Rock, um, Bully Ray, Jim Cornette, I can't remember who else, uh, praising too. Uh, basically, he could have a great promo, and I, and I couldn't be, you know, you know they, they could be more happier for Cody Rhodes, um, you know, from not being in WWE anymore, because WWE will never let like, come this type of promo. You know, they always got to be scripted promos. And that, don't don't feel organ, or, organic, but this one, this felt organic. So yeah, I loved it. Uh, Private Party versus the, the Dark Order. Uh, Private Party, you have Isaiah Cassidy and Mark Quinn versus, um... Stu Grayson and Evil Uno. Was it Steve Grayson or Stu Grayson? I think it was Stu Grayson. But anyways, they're the Dark Order. Um, winner gets um, added into the AW uh, World Tag Team Title match against SCU, the Tag Team Champions, and the Lucha Brothers at AW Full Gear. And SCU ends up being on, on commentary. Uh, you know, the Tag Champions, Scorpio Sky and Frankie Kazarian. They didn't contribute much on commentary, which is kind of weird, because you know, uh, your your guest commentary, so you got you need to, to, to contribute more, like like what Pac did, and to 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 a degree what Britt Baker did, and Ali, and to a degree as well. Um, I'm trying to remember who was on commentary as well, but contribute more. But it, for some reason, they, they didn't um, contribute a lot more, which I'm, like I thought they would. If Christopher Daniels was, you know, if Christopher Daniels was part of that of that booth. I, I guarantee you he would um he would uh, show more personality in, in that booth there, you know, if he was a guest commentator, you know Chris you know but unfortunately Christopher Daniels was still uh, you know still injured so that couldn't happen, but whatever. But anyways, um match itself, I couldn't get into it. Not, not because of the Dark Order, it's you know Dark Order you know I I, I already know I'm not going to get into the Dark Order that much anyways. I think I think the gimmick sucks and everything. And not 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 the same thing on about these all these wrestlers you know these two wrestlers they they're, they're good wrestlers. The gimmick is terrible, but but that's not that's not why I didn't get into the match. I just couldn't get into the match that much. I think I was still feeling the um the vibe, the bad vibes after what happened with Pack from that match. Um, you know that 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 screw up finish that they did. That they did. You know, see um, you know, burying the um the 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 finish move, you know, of the Black Arrow. In, in my opinion, I still can't believe that happened. I I think that's my mindset. I still can't believe that that happened. But in the end, it was a private party ends up winning when they uh, hit the uh, I'm trying to remember um, yeah, the, the green yeah the green and juice. Um, it's basically it's a hurricane into a, a to a cutter. That's what it is. So now private party are added into the AW um, World Tag Team Title match, which is now is now a three way. So yeah, after the match, you got the uh, Lucha Brothers confronting the private party. I think SU as a leading commentary and they so um you know basically you know doing a stir down all that, you know, basically selling the fact that um you know, you need to watch AW full gear to watch this match. And I thought I thought it did, it did its job for the, for the most part. Uh, Jim Ross says uh, a video was, was sent 
from the inner circle or pertains to Chris Jericho, who is the La Champion of AEW. So he's seen in the oh yeah, and basically this was, this was a parody to Cody Rose's um video vignettes where pertains to him getting ready for his his title shot against Chris Jericho at full gear, you know, but the whole thing with Cody Rose I'm seeing in the kitchen table table and Brandy Rose is all walking up, you know, it's coming into the, into him. Now I, I could be wrong. It could be a kitchen. It could have been the kitchen, or, or maybe maybe it, maybe it was the diner. Either way, I, I'm trying to remember what it was, but but it basically, um, it was it was basically that type of parody, uh, that Chris Jericho did, where he was um, sitting down, in a room alone, and Sammy Guevara walks up and he says, he's, he's got uh, you know, different, two different kinds of of the bubble, and then Chris Jericho uh says, yeah that's great, and then he ki and then he kisses him on his cheek. Same with how Clay Rose kisses on um, Brandy Rose, where it pertains to um, you know, with those discussing some type, some type of business, whatever, whatever. Uh, and then Clay was like, "Yeah, that's that's great, whatever." And then kisses her, walks walks off. And then Chris Chris Rock did this with Sammy Guevara, like, and, and it's the thing too. When I saw this, and I said, "So, okay, this looks familiar." And I wait a minute, are they doing a parody of, of this? The inner circle is doing a parody of what you know, what, of what the elite was doing with, with it pertains to Cody. And I said myself, "Okay, if, if this is a parody." Is Jericho gonna kiss Sammy Guevara? Cause I was thinking in my mind here, like it, he's not gonna kiss him, is he? And sure enough, he kisses him around the cheek, and then Sammy Guevara liked it. I'm like what the what the fuck is that? <laughs> oh my god! But but Jericho was talking, you know, kind of promo, uh, hanging in the in the tub, you know, drinking drinking um you know a little bit of the bubble there. Uh, <laughs> and then we have um. Virgil show up in this video package like what the hell where he where's he been? But they call him um Soul Train Jones. Um he praises Chris Jericho. Sammy Gravara uh, he praises Chris Jericho. Uh where he's look he he, he uh, he's he's um he's, he's looking up to Chris Jericho and Chris Jericho is, is gonna be his guidance. Uh you know pertains to uh you know because because Chris Jericho is a, is a veteran and everything. And also we see Jack Hager. I mean Jake excuse me, Jake Hager. He was being interviewed but he just stood there and said nothing and had that had that stone look on his face. <laughs> and, 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 the, and, the, and, the, and the funny part about this was the, the camera kept zoom was zooming into his face. Yo. Like what the <laughs> I couldn't stop laughing because you know cause we all know Jake Hager, you know, he always got that stone look on his face, even in WE. And we all know why, because you know, he he's he's in, he's into marijuana, you know. No smoke smoking the weed. So, <laughs> yeah. So right there, man. Like that. That was that was a nice touch. I, I loved it. It was a nice touch to that to that, um to it. Uh, but it continues. Jericho says, uh, it's tough to get up uh every morning and realize how how great it is. Basically, he's basically, he's re now he's really mocking, yo, know, Cody Rose. You know, making or, or, or his um, his version of this of the opinion, uh, you know, this, um, that, he, that he's doing, you know, a parody version of it in a way. Um, he's uh, Virgil said that Jerko is talented like uh, Arvin Al Alvin Garvin. Olive, I mean, I mean, Olive Gar Gar Garden. Let's see, Al Olive Garden. Excuse me. Uh, and, and I don't remember. Um, some Jerko's friends aren't was on there as well. And she says, you know, she, I thought she was more funnier uh, on here because she's an old lady and everything. And she said she wants Jericho to kick uh, Cody Rose's ass. And she smashed some other coach words too and all. I'm like, what the hell? Like, you, <laughs> you're supposed to be a, 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 a mature lady and you're, and you're being so immature. <laughs> oh my god, but, but that was it basically. Uh, and then Jericho uh, drops the, the little bit of the bubble line <laughs> at the end. Wow, that was pure gold. That was a pure gold parody I've ever seen from Chris Jericho, man. That was <laughs> I loved it. I freaking loved it. It was all just a mock uh, you know, Cody Rose, Cody Rose's family and, and, and his friends. And and, and it, it was great. Alright. Let's we get to Jamie Hayter and Emmy Shakura. Shakara, I think that says Shakura. Uh, cause yeah, you know, I think I think someone may have said it um differently on commentary. 
I, I, I can't remember, but I digress. But, but I'm going for Amy Shakura. But yeah, uh, Jamie Hayter and um, Amy Shakura, they go up against the AW Women's World Champion, Riho, and her tattoo partner, Sh Shanna. Yes, Shanna is back on TV. And Shanna, uh, she gets, she gets to, to show more how good she is, and she did in this tag team match. Um, yeah, this, and the tag team match was good too, by the way. Uh, Riho looked, looked good, obviously. Yeah, Riho. Riho! Uh, Amy, Amy, um, I mean, Jimmy Hader looked good. Um, M Amy Sh uh, Sh Shakura looked, also looked good too, as well. All four women looked good, good in this match. I, I, I enjoyed this women's tag, women's tag team match. Uh, in the end, it was uh, a shocking win here where. Uh, Shakura uh, rose up uh, Riho for the win, and I was in shock. I like what? Riho lost? Like wow! I was I was not expecting that. I, I didn't see that coming. Um, and then uh, Shakura says, "Yo, yo, I got your number, and at, at full gear, you're gonna lose that belt to me." So, I probably know she's not Bobby. No, she's not. But I'll get someone that wants to do the preview. Um, I, I just want to say too, uh, Jimmy Hater. She was basically in the match was bullying, you know, J uh, Jamie Hader was was bullying, uh, Riho, because Riho was a small girl and everything. Basically, she's she's, she's, she's like a, a a teenage girl being um, you know, from high school picking it's been picked you know basically Riho, who's a who's a fresh a freshman. Um, I'm basically giving comparisons on um, examples. I'm to say I, I'm examples. Riho is a is a, a teenage girl in in high school who's a who's a a, a freshman. Is being bullied by Jimmy Hader, who is bigger than her, and and she's a senior. You know, in high school, that's that's how I look at it, and and and, and it showed too. You know, going after the face and everything, and then and I remember what else she did too. But but yeah, she was basically um, you know, Jimmy Hader was basically being the bully to to Riho, but Riho uh, overcame her and all that. But at the end of the day, and then Michael's you know, um, Riho uh, and Shanna Chan didn't win. It was uh, Emmy Shakura and. Jimmy Hader winning this this tag team match. Again, I thought it was a, a good a good tag team match though. Uh, next we get to Brandy Rose. She sips some wine. She says that she worked so hard, and I don't care. Uh, to where where she gets in there, and then and then she says, you know, considering getting um you know dismissed for being Cody Rose's wife. You got that right. It's like she knows, you know, people like me is talking about her. Uh, and not being good enough, duh, because you're stuck in the ring. You're garbage. You're trash. And then we see some flashbacks of Austin Kong short, short, uh, shows up. And she says that with uh, Kong's body and her brain, basically, I guess she's going to stay, stick as a media manager, which hopefully, thank God, stick to being a manager. Because you in the ring, as a wrestler, Sucks. Moving on. I got nothing to say about this. Uh, we get Brandon Cutler versus Sean Spears being accompanied by Tully Blanchard. And right there, Sean Spears was going to win. And sure enough, he did. But it ends up being a, de a, de a decent match. This whole footage here of before the match even started, where Sean Spears uh, attacked Joey Janela from AW Dark. And basically, try to rip off his tongue out with the pliers, whatever. But whatever. But Sean Spears wins with a uh, death by driver. After the match, uh, you know they 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 assaulted. They, they were going to continue on with with the assault on Brett and Cutler, and then Joey Janela runs out for the save. And then Sean Spears runs away. The same Joey Janela who back who backed away from a fight. From Enzo Mori this past summer. Sean Spears is running away from Joey Janela. Whatever. Um K Omega and Hangman L Page versus Chris Jericho and Sammy Guevara. Uh, with Jack Hager at ringside, the main event, and the match itself was pretty good. Jack Hager uh, got involved in the match for uh, for, uh, for most of, most of it. In the end, it was Chris Jericho with the juice effect, 
to take out Hitman and the Page. I guess the win for for the uh, inner circle. Pushover and Sam Guevara wins. After the match, the inner circle um, beats down on Hitman and the Page. Meanwhile, oh, I forgot to mention too, by the way. Um, um, the reason why they lost is because Pat came out. The bastard. He kicked um, Hitman and the Page in the balls. And that's why they, they, they lost the match because um, Hitman. I mean, I mean, because because Jack Hager also too by the way he was taken out in the match too by the way, um, you, because he tried to get involved and Pack ends up being the um, the guy and who interferes to cause the elite the match anyway either way, uh, yeah, Kenny Omega and Hemi and Page were, were representing the elite. But yeah, um, that's what it led to though. So then uh, they bring up on Hemi and Page, and Kenny Omega comes in. Uh, oh, I said no, I said no, then no, not not yet though. Cody Rose comes out, I meant to say. He comes out for the save, uh, he, but he's on number. Uh, MJF comes out for the save. He gets a steel chair and hit, hits um, Hager in the back. Oh yeah, okay, I remember now. Oh yeah, Cody was, um, yo, he, he came for the save, but they, they got out of the ring. They got to the ramp, and that's when um, him, yo, MJF uh, had a steel chair, hits Jack Hager and everything. Uh, and, Jer and the Jerko, uh gets put back into the ring. They definitely continues on. Um, uh, Omega rope, uh, gets rope. Um, I'm sorry, how, how, I'm trying to remember how it happened. Oh yeah, Moxie comes out. He comes out to uh, to the ring, uh, with a baseball bat wire, baseball bat bar wire from the crowd. He gets in the ring. Uh, Omega sees him. Um, he gets in the ring. He gets the on um, the bar wire, um, you know, broomstick, and while Jericho and Cody starts fighting outside, and there's what they go at it. Also, uh. Proud and powerful of the inner circle comes out. Um, Santana Ortiz beats up on Moxie and Omega. Basically, anywhere you turn, it always got to stop the fight between Moxie and Omega. Cause I, I, you know, they're, te they're teasing. What, what's more, what's, what's um, more dangerous? The, base the baseball bat with ball wire or the broomstick with a ball wire? I guess we won't find out to uh, AEW full gear. But uh, they, they're beating them down. The young Bucks comes out for, uh, for, the, for the save. They start fighting up to the, uh, to the stage. And we see more on chaos going on on stage as well with Cody, Jericho, Guevara, Hager, um, MJF. All of a sudden, uh, Omega comes in, you know, because uh, Ortiz and um, Santana, Ortiz and Santana is going to take out one of the young bucks uh, off the stage, whatever, like they did with um, with, the, with Ricky Martin or the Rock and Roll Express. Um, so Omega comes in for the V trigger, and um, and then Moxie comes in with the um, the paradigm shift to uh, you know, basically the problem, problem powerful. And then also in Omega and Moxie, they search each other and they start fighting everything and they, and they, and they were gone. But but the but the brawl still continues. Um, the Young Bucks, um, uh, with Cody and MJF fighting uh, Hager, uh, Guevara, Jericho, and or or Santana Ortiz. Uh, Nick Jackson ends up being on stage and dies on on to them. And you know, and, and, and you know, we got security. We got, we got some. I think, I think we got security's coming out, but also we have referees out there too, trying to break, uh, try to break them up and everything. Uh, there was no match and everything. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to remember if if Heyman, um was still there. I don't think he was. But either way, uh, but they ended up closing the show with uh, with, with um and with chaos, uh, reeking. Um, and and I and I loved it. This is this is how you do a go home show, WWE. But more importantly, this is how you do a go home show, Impact Wrestling. Just saying. This is how you do a go home show. Have the, the people involved in in the peer review, you know, to, you know, to, eat, to have a brawl, you know, to have a you know, to have a um, you know, like a um, a stare down, or to, or to have a, you know, you know, to do something, instead of um, you know, not do nothing. And, and and you know and, and make us um you know be invested, make us feel invested, make us uh, focus on it, make us um intri intrigue into the into this um into what you're building up. I thought AW did a good job here with with their home show here, and I and I thought they knocked it out of the park. And that was it for the show. Hey, they convinced me to um watch. Either way, I was gonna still watch the show either way, you know, full gear. But um it convinced me that um you know uh, I should well, I should tune in to watch.
Okay, one moment, folks. Five matches, right? Yeah, Tomo Wrestling for AW Dynamite, show from October, I mean, November 6, 2019, excuse me. Five matches for AW Dynamite. My overall stream for the show for AW Dynamite from November 6, 2019. I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10. Good show, good going go show. It really it, it got me my, uh, my, my trick and my investment of why I should tune in to AW Dynamite. I mean, to AW Full Gear, excuse me. So, that being said, thank you for watching for It's Natural Born Driller. Saying peace on the streets. For the, this was your All Elite Wrestling Review. Where it to AEW Dynamite from November 6, 2019. Until next time, where it to All Elite Wrestling Review. I'm out. Take care.